this is Mike from Figs Engineering and today we are going to be welding up a hurricane. Now what is a hurricane you might ask? It is pretty simple. It's a welding skills project that is prefabricated with laser cut tube components. So you can focus more on the welding and less on the fabrication and fit up. Not that those things aren't important, but let's get down into the process. So this kit was made as a quick fit up kit. It will come in 20 separate pieces. There's basically 10 pieces for the perimeter and 10 pieces for the hurricane portion. Uh, the first step that I did was to clean and add a little bit of pop to them with a little bit of belt grain. So I took each individual piece, I ran it lengthwise on our combo belt sander. And just to give it a little bit of grain, it's gonna reflect refract some of the reflect it's going to reflect the light a little bit more and give it a little bit more dimensionality after it's welded up so after each piece was grained i wiped everything down with acetone and used a deburring tool from uh, i think this is a vargas deburring tool uh, to basically take off any burrs from the laser cutting process it is very tight uh, but usually I like to take off burrs so that then I can clean all the pieces a little bit easier with the acetone. Once all the parts were clean, it's time to do the dry fit up. Now this was a little bit trickier than I thought. You know, some pieces snap together a little bit easier than others. So you may take your time to, to kind of piece it back together, um, but it will happen. Uh, just got to find the right parts. They'll snap in, tab and slot and everything is a fairly tight, you know, pre-fixtured uh, setup. So the next stage was once it's all loosely set up, I decided to create some boundaries to give it more of a hard fixture before tack up. And this is really to make it so that, hey, I'm tacking over here, uh, a part um, doesn't slip or create a larger gap in another area of the assembly. After that, I tacked all the critical areas, starting from the middle and working outward. Again, when you're welding something, it will expand, it will pull, it will stretch. And so really to guarantee the best results, you kind of want to constrain this the best, the best that you can. Tacking both sides. Now it's a pretty solid structure. I don't need to worry about things moving. Uh, then I can kind of systematically approach each one of these weld joints. Now the machine setup was 85 amps. We're using a Miller Dynasty 280, uh, Michael Furick uh, ceramic 12 cup, and ER70 S6 from Blue Demon. Uh, just a perfect uh, multi-purpose filler, and probably what I use 90% of the time is going to be ER70 S6. Now, originally, I attacked these center joints from a downward kind of approach. That actually became a little bit more of a challenge because of the filler metal angle and just the overall torch angle that I had to carry. So while this worked this way for this side, on the other side, you'll see that I decided to do more of an uphill uh, type of, of uh, path. And that just gave me a little bit more control over how I was feeding the filler into these joints. Now the filler metal is a 1 16th uh, filler rod and the tung tungsten is 3 32nds, 2% lanthanated. Uh, again, that's pretty much what I use most of the time. 3 32nds, Blue Demon, Multi-Mix, Non-Radioactive, the pink, Tungsten is another you know, alternative that I use. So then it's just getting to every joint. Uh, again, I like to move around a lot just to dissipate the heat. It's going to reduce how much pull is going to go into any one of these joints. And another thing that I would say something to watch for is modulating the current. As soon as you get to the tab portion of the tab and slot on a lot of these pieces, 
uh, you're obviously changing the material heat profile. And so sometimes it, it actually, you know, wants to run a little bit different way. Uh, usually on the non, on the uh, slotted side, it'll lose a little bit of its, um, uh, it'll lose a, a little bit of, of its material shape. It'll want to run away from the joint because obviously it's a, it's a hole instead of a solid surface. So just something to watch out for is, you know, as you're approaching these tab and slot fixtures, you know, we use a lot of these in our products. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a very similar situation where you have to kind of move the heat around just to get the best puddle shape. Um, so anyway, just kind of worked these inner joints, uh, uphill again, uh, and just kind of, you know, index this around keeping a aluminum block there so that I have something to rest my hands on. Uh, I could use the TIG finger here, uh, if I wanted to, but, uh, I did use it a little bit later. I just found having a block or having these vertical clamps on the, the pro build table, uh, really just put my hands in the right position. A lot of this is, is all about getting your hands in the right position to ensure your success. And really just to give a little bit more background on this concept, it was originally done with a, you know, a hand fabricated fit up from a guy on Instagram. His uh, screen name is Latin Precision. He did a tubular version of this hurricane, which inspired, you know, a lot of other fabricators out there that specialize in aluminum and specialize in steel or chromoly or other uh, materials to kind of do this design. Uh, precision tube laser in Vegas took it one step further, made these uh, laser tube cuts on their Trump, you know, it's a $1.2 million uh, laser tube cutting machine, and it's just amazing. So if you want to check those guys out on Instagram, precisiontubelaser.com, uh, they're located in Vegas, and that's where we went to visit their facility. Uh, we were out there during SEMA and decided, hey, uh, my buddy Ray's uh, uh, was friends with, with Jordan. And so we went out there just to visit. And yeah, they do a lot of amazing stuff. It's really opened the door for us to make some newer products and really streamline our process. So definitely check them out. So total time in on this, I want to say it was somewhere around four hours total, just because I worked on it a little bit off and on. And, you know, hopefully you can, uh, you know, it's not about doing it fast. It's about playing with these different angles and different types of joints. Maybe you don't normally see these types of joints in the work that you're doing. Uh, if you're a hobbyist, maybe you're just starting out and you want a, a challenge. I certainly have done a lot of test pieces that I've had to weld up in various angles and and joints just as practice. And, you know, the whole idea of this is, yes, you get the practice in, you get the, you know, the time under the helmet, if you will, but you also get this cool thing that you can show people that, you know, is more of a, a display piece instead of just saying, hey, I, I weld stuff. Well, what do you weld? Well, you know, I... A lot of times I weld control arms and people look at it and go, oh, it's beautiful, but what is it? Well, this is, you know, something that kind of stands on its own. Uh, you can mount it to a wall or, or something else. So, but I think it's cool just to have something around the shop that kind of demonstrates your capabilities, right? So anyway, I'm going to let the welding roll and we'll cut back in at the end.
any case, if you'd like to order one of these kits, they are available on our website, www.shopfigs.com, and you can just search Hurricane. Currently, we just have the this square version of it, but there are other versions available. Um, tubular into rectangular profiles. Um, there's some aluminum ones now, and we'll be coming up with some other weld-up kits that kind of challenge different skills and sets. So uh, you can also buy filler metal um, and tungsten from us. Uh, just contact us for a quote on those items. And anyway, hope to keep you guys welding and just thought I'd share this uh, awesome project with you. I really think it's a great way to build up skills. Uh, I'm big on trying to develop this maker market. You know, let's get people making stuff instead of uh, just thinking about you know, buying something cheap that's disposable. Like, you know, I learned all this stuff uh, pretty much self-taught, just looking at all the data out there and, and kind of making my, my own decisions on how to address processes. So uh, something I just wanted to share with you guys out there that are, are looking to get better at welding or maybe even start it for the first time. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and look forward to giving you guys a little bit more welding content and just uh, sharing more things around our shop, Figs Engineering.